السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters Across the globe there are good people and there are bad people And Allah Almighty knows That each one of us Is supposed to be trying to be a good person If he or she Is concerned about the day that he or she will be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this reason, the detail given in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ goes as far as saying, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُتْ Whoever truly believes in Allah and truly believes in the last day should either say that which is beneficial or remain silent. What is meant by believing in the last day? It means you believe someone is going to take account of your deeds. Someone is going to hold you responsible for what you've done. And that is what differentiates a believer from the one who is not. We ask Allah Almighty to grant us true conviction and a true sense of belief because it will improve us as human beings. When there is a person on the street who feels that I have no one to answer to, he or she will do what he wants, begin to oppress, begin to do wrong. They start thinking that no one can stop me. I know everyone or I am the boss or I am the one in authority and they do what they want. Not realizing that Allah will catch up with them. Allah knows what they're doing. Allah is allowing them a time لِيَقْضِيَ اللَّهُ أَمْرًا كَانَ مَفْعُولًا In order for that which is meant to come to pass, to come to pass. Allah wants to test us. Some will pass the test, some will fail the test. The question is, where do you fit in? Where do I fit in? You believe in Allah and you believe in the day of reckoning. You won't harm others, you won't swear them, you won't backbite them. And on top of that, more important than all of that, you will worship Allah alone. You will worship Allah in a way that you know when you go back to Him, you have something to present to Allah. When a person sins, if he is a believer, he will sin in private and he will be ashamed of his sin. That's a sign that you have Iman. You have belief. And thereafter, he will seek forgiveness from Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. I'm a human. Human nature made me sin. I faltered. I was wrong. I want you to forgive me and still grant me Jannah. That's a sign of Iman. It's a sign that you believe in Allah. But if you have a person who doesn't mind, they really don't even think about the sin. They sin and they continue to sin, nothing stops them, it doesn't embarrass them, they do it openly, they encourage others to sin, then we're asking for trouble. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the blessed lips of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, people will continue to remain in goodness for as long as they do not openly commit sin and encourage it with one another. If the sin is a human weakness and you committed it and you sought the forgiveness of Allah, isn't it a sign that you know one day I'm going to go back to Allah? When my eyes close, I'm going back to Allah. Do you know those who fear death so much are actually those who don't believe in the mercy of Allah? Because death is inevitable. It will overtake you and I. It has to come. Don't be frightened of it. You are going to a better place. Did you not seek the forgiveness of Allah? Let me give you one beautiful example. You see, I started off by saying there is good and bad. There are tyrants and there are good people who are upright and just. There are oppressors and there are those who stand firm upon justice come what may, even if it is against themselves or their folks. One of the worst of the lot from the beginning of time to now was a man known as the Pharaoh. It is said perhaps that was Ramses II. This Pharaoh was so dangerous, he felt he was the Lord. He used to tell his people, Oh my people, not just the ordinary ones, the cronies from amongst them. In the Arabic language, the term used is Al-Mala. Al-Mala, the top people, the officials. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي 
Fir'aun said to his cronies, Oh my cronies, I don't know of any other God besides me for you guys to worship. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. What type of arrogance? And he knew he was a human. He also had stomach problems now and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. But this was the hierarchy that he decided to create because of envi an environment that continued over generations. When something continues to happen for more than a generation, the new generation considers it the norm. And they start thinking that's how it's supposed to be. This is why Islam teaches you to question your faith. When you know that there is something wrong here or you're feeling there's something wrong. You question it in order to find the answer that is correct. This is how people will come on the right path. Don't be afraid. Islam has the answers. And this is why when people don't know and you ask them, why do I have to pray five times a day? Hey, keep quiet. You can't ask that question. No, I'm not asking because I don't want to pray. I'm going to pray. I just want to know what's the answer. So the children ask all sorts of questions. Why do we have to eat halal? They are not asking because they don't want to eat halal. They are asking because they want to know. Don't stop them and rebuke them because if you haven't answered them, they will probably dilly dally and fall astray. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. The children of today are very creative in what they ask as well. And don't ever rebuke them. You ask. Allah provides the answers. You will get the answers. So this Pharaoh, he started convincing people that he was the Lord. They worshipped him. Musa alayhi salam was sent by Allah, the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, with his brother Harun, may peace be upon them. They were frightened initially, frightened in the sense that they were concerned, perhaps the Pharaoh is not going to respond to us favorably. Allah says, go. I am with you, I hear and I will see and I will defend and I will help. Allah is saying, don't worry, you go. They went. Where were they going? They were going to the worst of the time and they were the best of the time. Allah tells them, speak softly, speak calmly. Don't shout, scream, yell and use abusive language. I'm talking to you today. Imagine. We are supposed to be believers, all of us, inshallah. May Allah grant us Iman, grant us Jannah, all of us. If I were to scream, yell and abuse you, imagine Allah has asked someone way better than me not to abuse someone way worse than anyone that could be in front of me. Why should I be allowed to do that? When you call someone towards Allah, you have to use soft words. You have to use a beautiful method. Otherwise, they're going to go further away from Allah. But the point I wanted to raise is something very interesting. After that, the Pharaoh, and I'm jumping a little bit to get to my point. The Pharaoh says, do you know what? You've come to me with these signs. I will get people who can come with the same signs. And he got hold of the magicians according to some narrations. They were thousands of them. They came, these magicians came. What were they? They were people who worshipped the Pharaoh. They knew a bit of magic. They were masters. He brought them from all the different towns and cities. Come, let's come gather together. And so what happened is when they all gathered together and they threw their sticks and their ropes and people could see these snakes that were created as a result of an illusion. Do you know what happened? Musa alayhi salam was told, lay your stick down. As he laid it, what happened? Huge serpent, a real one, swallowed up whatever those people had made. Theirs disappeared. Thin air. They were shocked because these are masters in magic. They said, this is not magic. What happened? فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Immediately those magicians fell prostrate to Allah. What did they say? We believe in the Lord of the worlds. Now Fir'aun used to call himself the Lord of the worlds. In order to clarify that, they added another statement after that to say, Rabbi Musa wa Harun. The Lord of Musa and Harun, Moses and Aaron, may peace be upon them. Not this other one here, this cheap chap that is here, not him. Fir'aun immediately got up and said, hey, 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 
لَأُقَتِّلَنَّ أَوْ لَأُصَلِّبَنَّكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ I'm going to crucify you, all of you. Listen carefully. He threatened them. In our lives, we are also threatened by people who are lesser and cheaper than the Pharaoh. We are threatened. Don't be threatened by cheap things here and there. Don't worry. Take it in your stride. Allah is there. He will grant you the victory. Guess what happened? Firaun says, I'm going to sort you out. I'll fix you. I'll show you. I'm going to execute you. I'll chop off your hands and your feet and your legs. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Do you know what they said? They said, Subhanallah. La dair. No problem. Do what you want. La dair. No problem. Do what you want. Do you know why? Because you have a say on earth. A small say. You will never get away in the hereafter. We are going to go to Jannah. Subhanallah, Allah Almighty granted those magicians who were subsequently executed paradise. What did they do? They did two things. They stood firm in belief for the sake of Allah and they made one sajda in their lives. Did you hear that? They stood firm in belief for the sake of Allah and they did one prostration for the sake of Allah. After that, they were granted Jannah. I ask you a question and this was the point I was raising. How many sujood have you done in your life for the sake of Allah? How many times have you shed warm tears for the sake of Allah? How much have you tried? How many times have you sinned and come back because of none other than Allah? How many times have you actually said, Oh Allah, help me, guide me, strengthen me? How many times have you turned to Allah sincerely? So many times. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Don't let that stop until the end. If you breathe your last and you still moved on that same straight path, good news to you. But if you didn't, a great loss. As for the oppressors of this earth, they are not going to achieve anything. They will continue to try. They will continue to threaten. They might have the temporary joy of succeeding in some of what they may have threatened by fulfilling a portion of it no problem be strong look at those magicians they told the pharaoh la dair no problem do what you like it's okay you you can only hurt us here in in this world watch what's going to happen forever and ever my brothers my sisters if we've been hurt by people pray for them pray for their mercy pray that allah guide them and pray that Allah protect you from their harm in whatever way He wishes. If He wishes to take them away, so be it. If He wishes to keep them, so be it. Pray for protection and don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Because what's wrong is happening across the globe. People say, pray for China, pray for Afghanistan, pray for Pakistan, pray for Sudan, pray for... The list is endless, my brothers and sisters, no matter where you go. People are struggling and suffering. Pray for South Africa. Subhanallah. We have to pray to Allah for all of us, for everyone, for humanity at large. And we have to continue to spread the good word of the deen of Allah. If someone were to engage in a single prostration, truly for the sake of Allah, through an effort that Allah allowed you to make, trust me, it is a beautiful point of success. May Allah grant us all goodness and success. May we never lose hope, no matter what has come in our direction. This world is all about tests. The evil will continue with their evil until Allah wills. And the good will continue with their good until Allah wills. The difficulty is sometimes in the middle there are those who sway and they don't realize that don't become evil with the evil. But rather if you are evil, become good with the good. May Allah Almighty grant us every form of goodness. The reason why I say this is because we are struggling on earth from all angles. And the only way to come out of it is to go back to revelation. Look at what Allah has said. Check the examples. Take a look at what he taught. Allah did not make mention of the stories of the previous prophets just for you to enjoy before bedtime. No, he, he has placed them in revelation for us to learn lesson for our own lives in order for us to come up and to say this happened, that happened and this was the result of it. No problem. Allah will look after me. Have that yaqeen and conviction. May Allah bless us and strengthen us. Whenever something happens to us, take it in your stride. Some people say, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go somewhere else. When you go somewhere else, there will be a new type of a problem. Perhaps you might not be able to manage that one. If you can manage this one, 
Say Alhamdulillah, oh Allah, if this is my test, I thank you for it because this one, I can manage it. Don't test me with another one. La ilaha illallah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.